of why a lot of stocks aren't getting the credit they deserve in this stock market. Take Starbucks. On Friday, we spoke to CEO Kevin Johnson in his roastery in New York City. Cool place. And he laid out all kinds of initiatives that can help this company get its groove back and stay back. For example, earlier this year, Starbucks sold the international rights to the consumer packaged goods business to Nestle, giant Swiss company, for $7.15 billion in a partnership that's been very beneficial for both companies. Now, on Friday, we got a chance to check in with Kevin Johnson, the CEO of Starbucks, and Mark Schneider, man you hardly ever hear or see interviewed. He's the CEO of Nestle's. To hear more about this alliance, take a look. One of the things that I loved about how Starbucks stock bottomed was because you guys got together in a partnership that was lucrative actually for everyone and is helping the consumer. So Mark, tell us about it. That's exactly the spirit of that partnership and that's the way Kevin and I felt about it. I think this really plays to the strengths of both companies. It allows uh, Starbucks to focus on this thriving coffee shop business and international expansion opportunities. And then Starbucks partners with us for what we do best, and that is uh, consumer packaged goods. And uh, we're present in 190 countries. In 80 countries, we have an installed machine park for capsules, uh, for coffee capsules. And so we can do a lot of things for Starbucks, and Starbucks can do a lot of things for us. And we love the coffee, we love the brand. Well, what I thought was amazing was this is already accretive. I didn't expect anything good here until 2019. So this thing's working out well ahead, right? Well, it is, Jim, and you know, part of that is I think uh, Mark and I found that as we got this partnership together, our teams have worked to dramatically accelerate uh, the implementation of what we're doing to bring Starbucks coffee onto Nespresso and Dolce Gusto platforms, and we're now preparing to, to enter you know, a number of new markets with Starbucks through the CPG and food services capabilities that uh, Nestle brings. Now, I've got to tell you, Mark, when I was doing the work uh, at the point of meeting, I've always loved your company. It's a company that understands sustainability, understands the, eco the, the ecosystem, and wants to leave a small footprint. Our viewers want to own stock, and the stock trades in an ADR not very liquid. When can we just own Nestle's as like the way we would own a Procter or we would own a Kellogg? Well, I think, look, um, we are excited about the long-term prospects of the business. Uh, sustainability is part of our mindset, and I think uh, that's also part of us, those things that we share with Starbucks. I think that made it so easy to get together the on the coffee front. Similar. So the cultures are very similar, and uh, we noticed that when the two teams sort of got together and talked about coffee, it was amazing how well they clicked, uh, and uh, that's also part of being ahead of schedule now. That made it so easy. Um, but I think that also translates to a nice long-term perspective for the business and uh, sustainability is our mindset. And especially in this troubled day and age, I think this, that, that sheer stability uh, in our stock and year after year increases, I think that's something that investors love about us. I think we're in an uncertain time and both of you gentlemen will be able to put up uh, good numbers year after year after year. Despite the uncertain time, there's some things that are bought no matter what. You've got a great stable of brands that I don't think everybody realizes. Why don't you go over some of them that are really on fire? Well, clearly, coffee is one of them, and I think uh, between Starbucks and Nespresso and Nescafe, you know, those are the three major coffee Can brands you in the world. Nescafe is still big. When I was growing up, my mom served Nescafe. How could this brand stay so strong? And it's even stronger overseas because I think, you know, in Europe and Asia, you know, those are markets, South America, this is where the mar that brand is really on fire. In addition to that, one of our other businesses that's really doing well is Pet Care. Uh, the Purina brand name is going around the world, and uh, clearly pet lovers are willing to spend on perfect nutrition for their pets, and uh, this is something we cater to. Uh, we also caught the trend to healthy hydration, i.e. water, as opposed to carbonated soft drinks early, and rode that 30-year wave. And I think, you know, catching waves and then just riding it all the way over 10, 20, 30 years, I think that is what Nestle stands for. I just have to ask before I go back to Kevin, uh, plastic versus glass. I mean, let's get that on the table because we know we want glass. We don't want, unless you can recycle all the plastic. Yeah. And look, on plastics, uh, we understand there's an issue out there and we're working on uh, a larger degree of recycling. We also have a strong commitment out there by the year 2025. We want to make all of our packaging material reusable or recyclable. And uh, we're working towards that. We just founded the Institute of Packaging Science Good. last week and made an announcement around that because to us, commitments is one thing, but then you have to sweat the details and do the specifics to really do better. Kevin, is doing good also doing well for shareholders? Well, uh, we believe firmly that it is. You know, that the, the per pursuit of profit is not in direct conflict with the pursuit of doing good. And actually embracing the pursuit of doing good is a part of the Starbucks brand. And it is a, it's woven into who we are, into our mission and values. And candidly, it's part of why customers want to do business with us, because they know we're going to take care of our Starbucks partners. 
We care about the environment. Sustainability is one of the, the three social impact pillars that we have. And as Mark said, you know, this is something we share in common, the work we're doing around sustainability, beginning with making coffee the first sustainable agricultural product, to uh, the products that we serve coffee in, to our stores. And so uh, doing good is, uh, is actually a creative to a brand and to shareholders, and it's gonna be true to who we are, and we'll continue to do that. Why couldn't you do on your own what Nestle's doing with you? Well, Jim, you know I've been focused over this last year on streamlining the company so that we focus on the things that we do well and that create the most value for our customers and our shareholders. And when we look at the CPG and food services business, you know, we had a business in the U.S. and Canada, but we were nascent or non-existent rest of the world. So it's pretty obvious. Let's find a strategic partner that is good at CPG and food service. They can take us to 5 million points of presence in 180 countries. And so Nestle was the right strategic partner for us, and Mark and I have forged that partnership. Our teams are now engaged operationalizing it, and this partnership will create value for years to come. All right, I want to thank both of you. That's Kevin Johnson, Starbucks CEO, and Mark Snyder, Nestle CEO, whom we don't hear enough from because how well, classic good numbers, classic good balance sheet, classic world domination. Fantastic work. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks so much yeah, for having thank us. You. Thanks, Jim. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.